So here we are, waiting for that blue screen back there to finish going, Hey, can you please wait a minute while I finish installing things? And I thought, uh, while I was sitting there, <laughs> sitting here, uh, trying to get it working and my um, new gateway port thing working, and a gazillion terabytes of backup storage, new backup storage, which has backup of the backup in it. Um, I thought, let's talk about Fields of Despair, because I actually got to play that today. Uh, the last couple of times that I had goofed around with it, I was really watching uh, folks play and not participating in the gameplay per se, but uh, taking very interested notes. So... <clears throat> We started the campaign today and only we didn't get very far because uh, the buddy I play with, he tends to, he likes to talk about the rules a lot and kind of chew them and own them and crunch them up. And I was asking difficult questions as well. I was being a bit of a rules lawyer jerk myself today. Um, <clears throat> so here's what I think after one and a half game turns and, and, and playing with a guy who is steeped in history and in particular world war one history uh i think the game mechanics and the game play are very very rich and very very thematic and uh, allow you to explore world war one concepts very very well without it now we didn't get the late war game uh <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the late war period but uh, we, we, we did, you know, like I said, get one and a half turns done. So uh, I think it's, it's, it, it doesn't feel like it gets bogged down too much. Now, I imagine once you start putting trenches and stuff down, it sure it will. But I enjoyed the, art, the focus on artillery because that was so critical in World War I. Uh, I like the way supply works in the game. Um, I love the strategic... Uh, reallocation of resources at the end of a turn the air war is interesting because it's all about recon really in the first four uh, game turns so that adds a significant level of interest to the game there's also a lot of layers in the game play because you have these two phases uh, uh, in a turn so you're going to get to fight twice you're going to get to move twice and your opponent's going to get to fight and move twice and you know there's some argy-bargy bullshit that can go on with the British player you know, lunging for things in the last uh, moments of the turn to, you know, try and pick up a few stray VPs here and there because there's no retaliation until the next, you know, next turn. Um, within, so within that dual uh, activation, let's call it that, of a game turn, you only get to use the artillery and the air once, so you've got to decide when you're going to use it. You've also got to decide... Am I going to keep some in reserve for defense? Or am I going to use it all on uh, trying to blow up uh, one of these citadels and capture them and uh, roll all four ones? Uh, you know, it can happen. So lots of nuance there that surprised me given it is, you know, when I say it is just a block game, it is a block game, but it's a block game that is thoughtfully done. It reminds me a lot of the level of effort that went into Sekigahara to make it a fabulous game and a, a uh, era-specific and accurate game. My buddy does have a problem with the uh, BEF reserves, thinks there's uh, uh, reinforcements, thinks there's too many of them. Um, that there's no way that the British could have fielded 18 additional uh, divisions in 1915 or whatever the case may be but other than that you know that's a maybe that's a play balance thing that was done anyway so who knows who knows about that i don't know the details of how many jolly dough boys uh were available to have themselves splattered uh across the fields of Verdun. so uh in any given period of time and i've listened to the whole dan carlin uh series and i'm reading 1914 and a couple other books at the moment but um uh, don't I don't have that depth of uh, detailed knowledge to, you know, critique that uh, level of reinforcement way or another, one way or another. End of the day, 
that's a it's a bit of a, a, a non-event. What is a big deal for me though is is letting uh, British and uh, French forces fight together in the same hex. I really don't think that should be uh, allowed uh, per se. Uh, you know, you got to put the British effort here in perspective. Although they lost a lot of guys, that first of all they they would never be in the, under the same command, right? Uh, and they lost a lot of guys, but their forces uh, participating in World War One were minuscule relative to the French army size and all the rest of it. So, you know, I think there is an overplay of the BEF, and, and that's probably just a uh, Anglo-centric uh, viewpoint that Americans have or that English folk have of uh, how pivotal a role and how much of a role there was uh, for the British in World War One. But really, you know, the French, the French did just as much dying and not just as much they did much more dying and just as much fighting and were in all of these battles I tell you what if that screen doesn't reboot I'm going to get pissed um, and just as much dying and just as much fighting and had uh, way way more folks uh, uh, in the battlefield on the battlefield than the British did <clears throat> so it would be interesting to read a translated French World War One history book that's kind of more current and see what their viewpoint on uh, World War One is compared to what the Anglo-Saxon view of it is. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd share these points with you, not because I'm doing a, re a review or you care. I'm killing some time, but I would give a hearty thumbs up on the uh, Fields of Despair game. It's worth trying. It is an expensive game, but it is a gloriously beautiful and well done and well crafted game uh, although there do seem to be some informational counters for tracks and things that I would have liked to have seen I like the, the in fact you know I like the whole technology uh, aspect of the game as well there's another thing we I didn't really talk about but hey look seven minutes you're gonna get bored I'm now out uh, we're gonna set this thing up over at my buddy's house and leave it set up so that we can play a campaign should be fun uh, we'll get started on that in two or three weeks and I expect we'll knock that out over two sessions or maybe three sessions because I think our play cadence will pick up a lot. So talk to you all soon. Ciao.